Today's lesson is the birthmark. Hi, everybody. My name is Roger, and I'm Helen. And today, in our literature unit for this month, the month of November, we're going to be talking about a short story that was written a long time ago by the American author Nathaniel Hawthorne. This story, even though it was published way back in 1843, is still relevant today. Considering so many people are concerned about their appearance, and they go get plastic surgery all the time. Yes, back then people were concerned about perfection, about looking perfect, just as many people are today. And we can read the story or the summary of the story and see how little has changed. Now, the writer of the story, Nathaniel Hawthorne, is one of the most famous American writers. He studied in、uh, high school and universities in the states. He's part of the canon. You know, when you think of American literature, you think of Nathaniel Hawthorne. You think of Ernest Hemingway, and so on and so forth. So it's a very interesting story, very well written, and it reflects issues that we still care about over a hundred years later. Okay, let's、uh, get to it here. Let's summarize our story, the birthmark. Let's listen to the first part, and then we'll come back to discuss it. The birthmark. Aylmer had long been celebrated by his fellow scientists for his brilliant experiments. But he abandoned his work to marry the beautiful Georgiana. She was a dedicated wife who had just one physical imperfection—a small birthmark in the shape of a hand on her cheek. Consumed by his love for Georgiana, Aylmer paid no attention to the birthmark at first. But over time, he became increasingly bothered by it, as it was Georgiana's only flaw. Birthmark. Laser treatment can be used to remove birthmarks. 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 Laser treatment can be used to 举例来说 ，Greenpeace is dedicated to helping the environment and raising environmental awareness. 绿色和平组织致力于帮助环境以及提升环保意识。或是 ，The boxer is dedicated to the sport and trains every day. 那名拳击手全心全意投入这项运动，每天都会进行训练。再来，我们看到单字 imperfection。这个字是名词，表示缺陷、缺点或是瑕疵。例如。The diamond was free of any imperfections. 那颗钻石完美无瑕。又或者说 ，If you love someone, then you probably won't mind their imperfections. 假如你爱某个人，那你很可能不会在意他们的缺陷。So let's dive right into the short story summary for today, which is the birthmark. So birthmark refers to a mark on your skin that you were born with, and birthmarks can be really tiny, just like a speck of sesame, or they can be big. They can take up a part of a person's cheeks, and it can be all over the body. So that's a birthmark, and that is the subject of this short story. Now diving right in, it says Aylmer had long been celebrated by his Fellow scientists for his brilliant experiments, but he abandoned his work to marry the beautiful Georgiana. So Aylmer is a scientist, and he has long been celebrated, or praised, or admired by his fellow scientists, his colleagues, for his brilliant experiments. So he's a well-respected scientist. However, he abandoned his work. He left his work. He stopped working in order to marry the beautiful Georgiana. Right, and、uh, also be careful with that word "celebrate" here. As a verb, it does mean to celebrate, to have a party or something in someone's honor. You're going to celebrate someone's birthday when they turn, say, 40 years old or something like that. But in this particular case, it just means he's respected and he's. 
basically、uh, admired by his fellow scientists. So yeah, they did not have this big party and say, "Hey, Elmer, we love your experiments. You're such a great guy. Here, have some cake. We got you all these presents and stuff like that." No, it just means they actually respect him and they admire him, etc., etc. Now he abandoned his work to marry a beautiful girl by the name of Georgiana. Okay, so if you abandon something, you just stop it. You don't do it anymore, or you let it go. For example, maybe you had a pet puppy at one point, and it was so cute, and you liked having it, but it grew up to be a larger dog, and it was kind of mean, and it would bark all night and bother the neighbors, and it would bite people. So you said, "Let's get rid of this dog. It's just a pain in the butt." So you abandoned the dog. You just let it go outside, and you hoped it ran away. But、uh, you're not supposed to do that. That's pretty mean. Oh, that would be awful to abandon your pet dog or cat or any animal. Or you know, sometimes people abandon their studies. They're in university and they decide I'm going to leave. I'm going to abandon my studies because I'm too smart. I can go off and start my own business, as was the case with Bill Gates and some of the other big tech company CEOs. So that's the verb to abandon. Now here, Aylmer abandons his work because he is going to marry the beautiful Georgiana. Now, how is This woman, what is she like? She was a dedicated wife who had just one physical imperfection: a small birthmark in the shape of a hand on her cheek. So she was a dedicated wife. Dedicated. It describes someone who spends all of their time and effort on something. So they really care about something that they do or quality that they have. And in this case, Georgiana really cared about being a good wife to Elmer. So she was a dedicated wife. And Even though she was a dedicated wife and she was beautiful, she had one physical imperfection. So an imperfection is a fault or a weakness or a bad quality that somebody has, and a physical imperfection is. An imperfection that is related to the body, because physical is a word that related to the body. So Georgiana's physical imperfection is that birthmark. It's a birthmark that is on her face, and it's a very particular birthmark because it's in the shape of a hand on her cheek. So this birthmark, it's not round and it's not normal shape, but it's in the shape of a hand, and it's right there on her cheek, which means every time Elmer looks at her. He'll see this birthmark. Now, here in the next sentence, it says, "Consumed by his love for Georgiana, Aylmer paid no attention to the birthmark at first, but over time, he became increasingly bothered by it." As it was Georgiana's only flaw. Okay, so here we've got the word consume. To consume something usually means to use it or to eat it. Dogs consume dog food maybe two or three times a day. But in this particular case, if you're consumed by something, you're kind of obsessed with that thing. It's like the only thing that you think about. It is your obsession, and he was just so in love with Georgiana. He didn't really care about that birthmark at all. But as you know, when you're in love with someone, after a certain amount of time, you start to take them for granted, and maybe you start to point out their flaws a little more. So yes, he began to notice. That birthmark more and more, he became increasingly bothered by it, and he thought, "Hey, that's her only flaw. If she did not have that imperfection, or if she did not have that flaw, she would be the perfect woman." Yep. Now the word consume you can also use with other words like love. You can be consumed by love, which means you're completely overtaken by this emotion, this feeling of love. You can be consumed by jealousy. You can be consumed by hate, and you can also be consumed by your work. If that is. All that you think about, or your hobby, consumed by your hobby. If that's all that you think about, and that's all that you do. Yeah, or you could be consumed by anger. One of my companies in the past, the boss had a hot temper. Every once in a while, he would be consumed by anger, and he would throw things, and he would yell at people and stuff like that. So in this particular case. Aylmer was consumed by his love for Georgiana, but then later he began to notice that flaw more and more. So I guess he thought that he needed to do something about it. Okay, that brings us to the end of the first part of our lesson. Let's move on now to the second part. Aylmer kept his feelings to himself for some time, but he finally couldn't help but ask Georgiana if she'd ever considered having the birthmark removed. As it was disturbing for so lovely a face to have such a blemish, Georgiana assumed he was joking, 
but grew upset when she realized he wasn't. How could Aylmer truly love her, she wondered, if the sight of her was so shocking. Third part, we see that Pain keeps something to oneself. 只不把点点点讲出来，或是对点点点保守秘密。举例来说 ，I think Kathy is sick, but she's keeping it to herself. 我认为 Kathy 生病了，但她却保密没说。另外，这个片语还可以用于指人独来独往的意思，像是 Henry keeps to himself and doesn't like to be bothered. Henry 喜欢独来独往，不喜欢被打扰。And welcome back. So we're looking at we're talking about Elmer and Georgiana in the story, the birthmark. So Elmer, at first, he notices this birthmark on Georgiana's face, but it doesn't really bother him because he is consumed by his love for Georgiana. However, things gradually change after they've been married for a while. It says here. Elmer kept his feelings to himself for some time, but he finally couldn't help but ask Georgiana if she'd ever considered having the birthmark removed, as it was disturbing for so lovely a face to have such a blemish. So, looking at the first part of the sentence, Elmer kept his feelings to himself for some time. To keep something to yourself, to oneself, means to not talk about it, to not express it. You put it in your heart, and you know that this feeling, this thought, is there, but you just don't tell anyone. So he kept his feelings about the birthmark to himself. Didn't tell Georgiana. Didn't say anything for some time. Means for a long period, relatively long period of time. But he finally couldn't help but ask Georgiana if she'd ever considered having the birthmark removed. So he couldn't deal with this feeling about the birthmark. Mark anymore. So finally, he had to ask Georgiana if she would ever consider, ever think about removing this birthmark. Yep. So couldn't help but I can't help but do something, which means basically you can't control yourself. You have to do it.、Uh, I'm on a diet, and somebody offered me a bowl of ice cream. I couldn't help but eat it. It looked so good. It was so tasty, and it was such a hot day. I thought, oh well, I'll just make up it for tomorrow by skipping breakfast or something like that. So in this particular case, he couldn't help himself. He had to ask her if she'd ever considered having the birthmark removed. Hey, George. Georgiana, my dear, would you consider, or would you think about getting rid of that birthmark? I'm not sure how you would get rid of a birthmark. Is it as easy as getting rid of a tattoo? If that's the case, then ooh, it would be quite painful, wouldn't it? Well, today it wouldn't be a problem at all because there are many procedures, many ways to get rid of birthmarks. It's not a problem at all if you go to a dermatologist, which is a skin doctor. But back then, back in the the mid 19th century, I think it would have been A very dangerous procedure. I don't think it was something that was commonly done. Exactly. So he asked her if、uh, she would consider having it removed, and he thought it was disturbing for so lovely a face to have such a blemish. We've got the word blemish here. That's a flaw. It's an imperfection. If you want to buy a used car, for example, you might see a blemish on the windshield or something, or a blemish on the、uh, body of the car, and you'll think,、mm, I don't want to buy this car because it's got that sort of mark there. It's A blemish. It、uh, makes the car not perfect. Right now, how did Georgiana react? I don't think that a woman would react well if her husband talked to her like that. Now, Georgiana assumed he was joking, but grew upset when she realized he wasn't. He was being serious. She realized he really wants me to remove this birthmark. Now, again, if something like that happened today, it wouldn't be such a big deal because it's not difficult to remove a birthmark today. But back then, maybe it was considered life-threatening. There wasn't a procedure for it. So to hear Elmer say something like that was really shocking.、Uh, exactly. So of course、uh, she was kind of disappointed there. She thought that he truly loved her. So how could Elmer truly love her? She wondered. If the sight of her was so shocking, so yeah, if you're in love with somebody, you're not really supposed to care too much about what they look like. You love the person and not the surface of the person. So of course, she was probably disappointed. You just see me as a beautiful woman. You don't really love me heart and soul. So of course, she was probably quite upset at that. 
And I wonder what she decided to do as a result of Aylmer's question there. Let's move on now to the third part of our lesson and continue to find out. As a scientist with experience in the workings of life, Aylmer proposed removing the birthmark himself in order to make her fully perfect in all ways. Georgiana knew she would rather die than continue to horrify her husband. She trusted in Aylmer's talents, so she agreed to his plan. The third part, we see the phrase "would rather than," which means you would rather do a little bit rather than do a little bit. For example, I would rather finish the work tonight than get up early tomorrow morning to do it. I would rather finish the work tonight than get up early tomorrow morning to do it. I would rather finish the work tonight than get up early tomorrow morning to do it. I would rather finish the work tonight than get up early tomorrow morning to do it. Kate 在空闲时宁可睡觉也不要看书。另外，我们补充一个相关的片语 ：would rather， 指宁愿点点点，或是宁可点点点。举例来说 ，Peter would rather spend this weekend at home. Peter 这周末宁愿待在家。或是 Bill would rather go shopping with me tonight. Bill 今天晚上宁可跟我去购物。最后，我们看到动词 horrify， 指使产生反感。使感到震惊或是毛骨悚然。我们可以说 ，The thought of going to school on Sunday horrified Julie. 星期天要去上课的想法让 Julie 十分反感。或是 ，Alan was horrified at the movie's violent ending. Alan 对电影的暴力结局感到非常震惊。另外，补充这个字的形容词 horrific, h o r r i f i c, horrific. 指极其可怕的，或是令人震惊的，像是 The photos showed the horrific effects of the disease. 这组照片呈现了这个疾病恐怖的影响。So Elmer has expressed his feelings to Georgiana about the birthmark that she has on her face. And Georgiana reacts at first by thinking that Elmer was joking, but when she realized that he was being serious, she felt really disappointed because she thought, "How can he really love me if he is so bothered by just a small blemish on my face?" Now, what's going to happen next? As a scientist with experience in the workings of life, Elmer proposed removing the birthmark himself in order to make her fully perfect in all ways. So, Elmer, as we mentioned before, is a celebrated scientist. So, his fellow scientists respect him. They respect the work that he has done, and he has a reputation for being a very successful scientist. So, as a scientist with experience in the workings of life, or how body Function. He has experience with life and death. Elmer proposed removing the birthmark himself. So he said to Georgiana, "You don't have to go out to see another doctor to have this birthmark removed. I'll just do it myself because I am experienced. I know I can do it." And he wants to do this in order to make her fully perfect in all ways. Right. So in this sentence, we've got the phrase "the workings of something." That just means how something works. For example, my uncle Chet is experienced in the workings of the hog breeding industry. He works,、uh, you know, on a farm and he raises hogs. So he's、uh, experienced in the workings of that industry. He knows how the industry works. He's an expert. People come to him for advice all the time. So here, of course. Elmer is an expert in things having to do with life, so he proposed removing that birthmark, and so then she could be perfect in all ways. Georgiana knew she would rather die than continue to horrify her husband. So again, she is a dedicated wife. She's loyal. She wants to please her husband. Nowadays, most wives would probably get pretty angry and storm out of the house and.、Uh, Probably、uh, ask for a divorce or something like that, but in this particular case, oh, she was loyal, she was dedicated. So of course she wanted to please her husband, and of course she would rather die than continue to horrify her husband. So would rather you would rather die than do something else. Okay? Would you like to play tennis today? Oh, I'd rather die because it's so hot outside. <laughs> 
Right. So, would rather die than do something else, or rather die than verb. It's basically a figure of speech that expresses how deeply you feel about something, how deeply you don't want to do something. So, I could say something like, "I would rather die than have to borrow money from my parents," because that would really make me feel embarrassed. You know, I'm an adult; I should be able to to make my own living and have my own money. If I have to ask my parents for money, I'd rather die than to do that. So, it's not something that you would say. Literally, you don't literally prefer to die than to go play tennis. It just expresses how deeply you feel about not doing a specific thing. And here we've got the word horrify. That just means to really scare someone or to really shock someone. So you could say, "I was horrified at the news of all those stray dogs dying in the storm." So here, of course, she did not want to scare her husband, to upset him, to horrify him. So she trusted in Aylmer's talents. So she agreed to his plan. I guess she still wasn't happy about it, but again, she was a loyal wife, and she didn't want to upset him. So she agreed to whatever he wanted to do to get rid of that birthmark. And that brings us to the end of our explanation for today. Here comes our Chinese teacher. Hello, students. Hello, everyone. I'm Hanny. We're looking at today's grammar points. 故事里面的科学家 Elmer， 他本来不在意妻子脸上的胎记，但是久而久之，他变得越来越在意。那有很长一段时间，他都没有把自己的感受说出来。课文就写到 ，But he finally couldn't help but ask Georgiana if she'd ever considered having the birthmark removed. 好，那这边有三个重点。第一个是。Can't help but 加上原形动词是表达忍不住、不禁或是不由自主的做某事。那文中它是用过去式 couldn't help but ask Georgiana 来表达说忍不住去问乔治安娜。那要特别注意到 can't help but 后面是要接原形动词，我们也可以用 can't help 加上动词 ing。例如 ，She can't help but smile at the photo。也可以说 ，She can't help smiling at the photo. 她不由自主地对着照片微笑。第二个重点，动词 consider， 它有考虑、细想、斟酌的意思。那么后面是要接名词或动名词。像我们可以问说 ，Have you ever considered studying abroad? 你有考虑过要出国念书吗？那补充一下，有一个副词片语叫做 all things considered。这个字面意思是说，把所有事都考虑进去，那就是用来表达以全盘考量过，就类似我们中文说的“总的来说，整体来说”。好，例如 ，All things considered, it was a memorable trip. 整体来说啊，那是一趟令人难忘的旅行。第三个重点，文中它在 considered 后面接了 having the birthmark removed。那么 have the birthmark removed 就是说把胎记去除。它用到的句型是 have 加受词加上受词补语。那么 have 在这边呢，它是当使役动词来表达要求、命令，而受词补语它可以用原形动词啊，或是过去分词。当这个受词和补语的关系是主动时，我们就用原形动词来当受词补语；当它是被动关系时，我们是用过去分词。好，那来学这两种用法哦。第一种，我们说 have 加受词加原形动词是用来表达命令或要求，那这常用在是一次执行完成的动作，或者是这个动作啊在一定时间内完成。举例来说 ，She had her son mop the floor. 她教她儿子拖地。好，那么第二个用法，我们说 have 加受词加过去分词，这时候受词通常是事物，表达说请人做某事，让人做某事。例如 ，I had my laptop repaired yesterday. 我昨天请人家帮我修笔记型电脑。好，那因为这个笔记型电脑跟修理这样的关系，它是被动的，所以我们这边是用过去分词 repaired 来当补语。那么以上是今天的重点整理，我们来回顾这些单词吧。Abandon. Henry abandoned the idea when his wife told him that it was unrealistic. Dedicated. 
My sister is a dedicated teacher, and she always puts her students first. Physical. There is no such thing as physical perfection in a human being. Consume. Eve was consumed with jealousy when she found out Sam was dating someone. Horrify. Sebastian was horrified by the news of his brother's accident. Well, that brings us to the end of another edition of our program, and please make sure you join us again next time. From all of us here, I am Roger. I'm Helen. See, See you, you next time. time.